The World Health Organization has now declared Omicron a variant of concern based on evidence that the mutation could make it far more transmittable than the Delta variant. Countries around the world now imposing travel bans to prevent this from spreading. Tonight we have team coverage. Let's go to our Stephanie Valderrama. She has more on the local governments and school districts and how they're responding. Yeah, Jim, what I can tell you tonight is that schools and local governments are monitoring the situation. But like you said, the president did address the nation earlier today, calling for shots, not shutdowns. The world braces for the potential rise of the Omicron variant. On Monday, President Joe Biden once again urged mitigation measures that have recently morning, been relaxed nationwide. Please wear your mask when you're indoors in public settings around other people. The governor of New York already declaring a state of emergency, mobilizing resources to fight and prevent a winter spike. Meanwhile, Florida is sitting idly by. In mid-November, Governor Ron DeSantis signed new legislation to prevent local governments and school districts from mandating vaccines and imposing mass mandates. Tying the hands of local leaders from implementing mitigation measures to prevent the spread of the virus or any mutations. CBS 12 News has learned Martin and St. Lucie counties, as well as Palm Beach and Okeechobee County schools are all monitoring the situation. A spokesperson for Okeechobee says the school district has not altered cleaning procedures since the pandemic began. And Palm Beach County school leaders tell CBS 12 News they are waiting for direction from the county health department. Today, the governor addressed the variant during a press conference in Orlando. And let me just say, in Florida, we will not let them lock you down. We will not let them take your jobs. We will not let them harm your businesses. We will not let them close your schools. DeSantis, who at one point asked former President Donald Trump to loosen travel restrictions against China, Brazil, the UK and Europe, says travel restrictions do not work. That's Today, awful. echoing the long, same long message. Uh, I think it's ineffective. I don't think it works. You can't cripple your society. So the president does not anticipate any more travel bans, but keep in mind that in order for international travelers to come to the U.S., they must show proof of a negative test. Well, while there's a lot that we don't know about the Omicron variant, scientists say its many mutations and rate of infection make it a strain to watch. CBS 12 News reporter Danielle DeRoss spoke to two COVID experts in Florida who explain why a more contagious variant may not necessarily be a bad thing. She joins us live with that story. Well, they tell me that this is the way that viruses tend to behave. They mutate to become more contagious, but oftentimes less severe. And if Omicron fits that pattern, then that can mean that COVID is on its way to becoming more like a cold. This is kind of, you know, something that we want to keep an eye on, but not something that I'm going to recommend people panic about or change their plans or anything about right now. Anyway. While the Omicron strain has been called a variant of concern, Dr. Thomas Unash of the University of South Florida isn't too concerned about it yet. The variant appears to be more contagious, causing a sudden surge in new cases in South Africa. But Unash says anecdotal reports suggest it's causing just mild disease. If the virus is mutating to be more transmissible but less severe, that could mean COVID is closer to behaving like a cold or or a flu. He says because viruses need to spread to survive, they tend to become more mild over time. While a host with severe symptoms will stay in bed and isolate, a host with mild symptoms will continue its activities and potentially spread the infection to more people. And in a way, that would be uh, great, you know. <laughs> if, if this thing spreads around and gets to everybody and everybody gets a case of the sniffles, I think we could all deal with that, right? But other COVID experts like Dr. Michael Tang point out the new Omicron variant has unique features that could make it more of a threat. One of the reasons that we're a little concerned is that we see a huge number of mutations in the spike protein. And the spike protein is the protein that we're immunized against. The virology and immunology expert at USF says Omicron's many mutations mean it could escape immunity and make current vaccines less effective. But so far, it still appears unvaccinated patients have the worst outcomes when infected with this variant. And that's why he says now is the time to get vaccinated and boosted before the strain spreads even more. If you're not vaccinated, get vaccinated because... You know, if this one, you know, if this turns out to be better than Delta, you're going to need all the help you can get. 
This variant has not yet been detected in Florida or in the United States. And Dr. Yunash tells me based on how long it took the Delta variant to come here and take hold, he does not expect that Omicron will be a major factor for us in this holiday season. A Riviera Beach police detective is being honored for his quick thinking and heroic actions. Yeah, that detective came upon a tragedy on I-95 over in Martin County and did, well, what a lot of people might not have done. Our Al Pefley joins us in Riviera Beach Police Department tonight with the details. A Riviera Beach police detective put his training to good use, and when he saw an incident on I-95 where a state trooper needed help, he knew he had to stop. We would like to honor you with the award for valor in 2020. Congratulations. Riviera Beach Police Detective Jamal Headings was on his way to work one day in February 2020, a day he'll never forget. He came across a scene on I-95 in Martin County where State Trooper Joseph Bullock had been shot after Trooper Bullock stopped to assist a disabled vehicle. Detective Headings shot and killed 28-year-old Franklin Reed III of Palm Bay, who police say gunned down Trooper Bullock. Just want to thank everybody out there and uh, make sure we all stay safe. Detective Headings was given an award for valor by the American Society for Industrial Security. I just wanted to uh, once again thank my, my police department, my, my trainers, all my co-workers, Major Chandler and Troop L and the Bullock family um, for the support they've given me. What he did when he engaged the suspect, what Detective Headings did, that's what we're trained for. The FHP says Detective Headings was in Martin County, not in his jurisdiction, but he stopped to help a fellow law enforcement officer who needed help. He was in Martin County. He was a Riviera Beach police officer. He wasn't in his jurisdiction. He wasn't in a marked police car. He could have drove by like the hundreds of other, other cars that drove by that day. The FHP says Detective Headings' actions should be an example for anyone in law enforcement. It was his character that day that sets him apart from so many that's what makes him a hero. The FHP says every new police officer should have the privilege of sitting down with Detective Headings, who showed the kind of dedication and character that every officer should strive for.